Antonio Brown is facing a second accusation of sexual misconduct. According to Sports Illustrated, a second woman has come forward. The alleged incident happened in 2017. Sports Illustrated reports the accuser is not pursuing charges. This comes as Brown's first accuser, Brittany Taylor, is reportedly expected to meet league officials today. She filed a lawsuit against Brown last week. Brown has not been charged and has denied the allegations, but the NFL still wants to speak with Taylor as it investigates the accusations. According to ESPN, Brown rejected a $2 million settlement agreement from Taylor's camp before the lawsuit was filed. Let's bring in Bill Ryder now, who joins me now from Los Angeles. He is the host of Writer's Block on CBS Sports HQ. Hi, Bill. So what more do we know about how the NFL is investigating these accusations against Brown? You know, Tanya, we know very little. The NFL is this entire Antonio Brown saga has played out, and there's new details, as you referenced, has continued to emerge has practiced radio silence. As you said, we know that they're going to meet with the first accuser. They obviously allowed Antonio Brown to play over the weekend. He had a touchdown reception in his first game with the Patriots. But certainly the sense around the NFL is that these new allegations and the Sports Illustrated story, which beyond the allegation of sexual, sexual misconduct, just paints a picture of a unlikable Antonio Brown who doesn't make good on his debts and his financial obligations according to the allegations that's certainly going to add some pressure to Roger Goodell and the league to try and speed up whatever their decision is going to be. And the league could have put Brown on the exempt list last week barring him from playing or practicing but it declined to do so. Could Brown still be put on the list pending the outcome of this interview with Taylor? He absolutely can. It was a little perplexing to some of us out there that understand that the commissioner's exemption list was created for this exact reason. And the way that it works, Tanya, Antonio Brown, in his case, if he's placed on the list, he can't play. He can't be part of team activities. The team gets a free roster spot. But most notably, Antonio Brown still gets paid. So it really is this, this middle ground that allows you as best you can to hit a pause button on the player being a part of the league without taking away his income. This idea of trying to find some fairness where you get to the bottom of the allegations. The league, for whatever reason, chose not to do that last week, and we're waiting to see whether they'll choose with these new allegations to perhaps utilize that option this week. And Brown certainly helped his team, the Patriots, beat the Miami Dolphins 43-0. to This is the Dolphins' second straight blowout loss. Is the team purposely trying to lose, Bill, and can the NFL do anything to stop that? Yeah, it's, it's a really good question because what players will tell you is that players never tank, which is true, but players don't decide who gets to play, whether a guy, for example, like Laramie Tunzel gets traded, which he did, one of the best offensive linemen in the game. I think the short answer is, yes, that Dolphins organization doesn't seem to be fielding a competitive football team, eyeing probably the number one pick in the draft and the quarterback they'd like to get. And no, I don't think the NFL can do anything about it, in part because, unlike in the NBA, we haven't seen a lot of committed tanking over the years. And so this is, this is, new, uh, this is new territory. I'll, I'll add this. This is also a young head coach who came off that Patriots coaching staff. Those guys often have limited success, so it does feel like a perfect storm. The players that are fielding and the coach who's struggling to connect with his team is probably going to add up to a lot, of, a lot of losses this year. Tough to be in Miami right now. All right, Saints quarterback Drew Brees and Steelers quarterback Ben Roethlisberger suffered serious injuries on Sunday. Can these teams carry on without these players? It's going to be, it, we, and we saw this, it's going to be really, really difficult for the Steelers. Ben Roethlisberger is out for the season. That means Mason Rudolph is going to try to have the tax to carry this team. Now, they played a tough Seattle team, and Rudolph played pretty well. So maybe, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy into this, but maybe if you're a Steelers fan, you hold on to a little bit of optimism, even though you're 0-2. But the Saints, with Teddy Bridgewater as the backup to Drew Brees, Brees out about six weeks, we think. I mean, that offense was anemic. It, it was painful to watch. It was difficult to watch if you're a Saints fan. I mean, you do get Drew Brees back at a certain point, but they have a very tough schedule over this stretch in which we expect the QB to be out. I do not think things don't look good, Tanya, for either of these football teams. All right. Well, Bill Ryder in Los Angeles, we thank you. Always a pleasure. You bet.